Namaste to everyone. Namaste to everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the morning session. Uh, namaste everyone. Welcome to the morning session. Gopal Bhaiya is not available today. So I will be taking the English session today. We have been doing exercise 1 and now we are on exercise 2. In exercise 1, we were trying to observe the self by the self. And we did the seven steps. I will not go through that because you have already been through that. In exercise 2, while observing the self, we were also trying to observe the body and this interaction between the self and the body. And of course, this is being done, this observation is being done by the self. So in step one, we were trying to observe that I am there. I, the consciousness, the self, I am a reality, I exist. Body is also there. I can see that the body is also there. How do I see? Seeing not by the eyes, but by seeing when I am trying to see myself, seeing the activities going on within the self. So when I see the activities going on within me, I can see that I am a reality, I exist. I am an existential reality. When I read sensations from the body, I am observing or reading these sensations. This is in a way seeing. Then I am able to see that the body is also a reality. Body exists. So I can see that these two realities are there. I, the self, the consciousness, and the body. These are two distinct realities. We were trying to observe this in step one. Then in step two, we were trying to observe the interaction between these two realities, between the self and the body. So in this interaction, we discussed and we were observing this for ourselves, that I give certain instructions to the body. The instructions is a form of information that I am giving to the body. And there are many events taking place in the body. Digestion is happening, circulation is there, heart is beating. So many things are going on in the body because of which there are many sensations taking place in the body. So I read those sensations that I consider important. These sensations are also a form of information. So this interaction between the self and the body, it is only in the form of information being transferred one to the other. Instruction being passed from the self to the body and sensation being read by the self from the body. There is no physiochemical exchange. There is only exchange of information in this interaction between the self and the body. In step three, we were trying to observe the decision maker. Who is deciding regarding this information exchange between the self and the body? And we were trying to see that it is I, the self, who decides what instruction to give to the body, when to give that instruction. It is I, the self, who decides to read certain specific sensations from the body. 
sensations that I consider important. Many sensations are there going on because of the many processes going on in the body. I choose to read a particular sensation at any time based on whatever I think is important. And many examples had been given for this. Itaji's hand is raised. We'll just come up to step four and then we'll take your observation. So this decision regarding the exchange of information between me and the body, these decisions are entirely mine. I interact with the body as and when I require, as and when I think it is important for me. And you may be able to notice that I do this only from time to time, not all the time. Only when I think it is important. Many a time, we may be lost in our own imagination, the activities within us, and we may not even be aware of the body. But then, as and when I think it is important, I start paying attention to particular sensations in the body and I may choose to give some instruction to the body. And if you look at the body, the body is acting according to whatever instruction I give to it. So I choose what instruction to give what sensation to read and I use the body for whatever I want, what work I want to get done from the body as per my decision, as per whatever I think is important for me. So in that sense, I am using the body as an instrument for myself. So ultimately, I am the one the decision maker in this whole interaction. I am deciding what to do, what not to do. When we look at the self, within myself, I am choosing, I am deciding my feeling, my thought, my expectation. And whenever I feel my involvement is required, I give some instruction to the body with whatever I want to get done through the body and the body acts according to my instruction. So I am using the body like an instrument. And of course, when it comes to the sensations in the body also, I am the one who is reading those sensations that are important for me. I choose, I decide what sensation to read, what not to read. So in all of this interaction, I am the decision maker and I am interacting with the body either to get some information about the outside or to have some interaction with another human being or with nature, some other object and so on as per whatever is important to me at that time. So I, the self, I am the seer, I am the one who is seeing, observing, right? Because I am choosing when to see or when to observe. And I am using even the sensations, what we say, I see the body or I see the outside. So who is seeing? The eyes are the instrument, they are a part of the body. Are the eyes seeing or reflections are forming in the eyes and I am paying attention to that, to the sensations that are generated by these and I am interpreting, giving some meaning and drawing some conclusion from this. 
So in that sense, I am the one who is seeing, I am the observer, and I am using these senses of the body to find out more about the outside whenever I think it is important for me. So the sense of sight, sense of smell, sense of taste, sense of hearing, sense of touch, all of these are available to me. And I chose to read particular sensations at any particular time and accordingly give some meaning, decide what to do, and then give the instruction to the body accordingly. So I am the one who is observing through the various sensations. I am the one who is doing because I am the one who is deciding what to do and I am the one who is giving the instruction to the body. So I am the doer. And ultimately with all of this interaction there may be some experience of happiness, unhappiness, tiredness, pleasure, who is experiencing these? I am the one who is experiencing or enjoying these. So I am the experiencer also. So I am the seer, the observer. I am the doer. And I am also the experiencer or the enjoyer. And for all of this, I am using the body like my tool or an instrument. In step four, we were discussing, we were trying to see this difference between the self and the body by the self. So when I am reading any sensation that is taking place in the body, I can ask myself this, am I this sensation that I am reading? Am I in the sensation that I am reading or I am different from this sensation that I am reading? And we were trying to see this, that I am not the sensation, neither am I in the sensation. But there is a difference between me and the sensation. And I can choose to read whichever sensation I want, whenever I want. And I can choose to read the sensation that is taking place in any part of the body from where I am. So there is a difference between me and the sensation. Or there is a difference between me, the self, as a reality and the body as another distinct reality. This we were trying to do yesterday and that is what our assignment was also. To try to observe this. To observe any sensation in the body. It could be a sensation of pain. It could be a sensation of hunger. It could be a sensation of itching. It could be a sensation of warmth, of heat. It could be sensation of coolness and coming in touch with something cold. It could be tingling, it could be numbness, it could be any sensation. So try to observe that sensation and ask yourself, are you that sensation? Try to see, are you the sensation? Are you in the sensation? Or are you different from the sensation? This was what was our assignment yesterday. And we were to observe this throughout the day. So if you would like to share your observations, Regarding this, we can take your observations and questions now. Didi, namaste, Didi. Tabito, namaste. Didi, yesterday morning we had been to a function. While moving out from my home, mistakenly, um, I have put a, uh, I have put um, old slippers. Mm -hmm. So while going only, I noticed that I was putting a wrong slipper. It was in a very bad state. For 10 to 15 minutes, it was troubling me a lot. 
I thought of going back, but there's no way. But after 10 to 15 minutes, I was able to resolve at my thought level that I am not the body, I am not those slippers, and I am not those, I, I am not in the slipper. So that I was able to resolve at the thought level. Once I got resolved, then I attended the function comfortably without being disturbed by those slippers, Didi. Didi, my question is, yes, now I am able to resolve at the thought level. Next, what I am supposed to do, Didi? So you can ask yourself, what was bothering you at that time? Why were you disturbed when you looked at the slippers, first of all? It was in a bad state, Didi. I thought people will disrespect me. So this was the reason behind the slippers. Mm. Mm. So here we are mm. looking at, although you were talking about step four, observing the sensation, here we are looking at the object, right? Mm. The slippers that you are wearing. And we have given some meaning to it. Mm. And we have some things that we accept, some things we don't accept. This is one of our acceptances, that if I'm wearing this kind of slipper, others may not respect me. I've accepted that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now this is not matching my acceptance, so I'm disturbed. Mm. Yes, really. So, at one moment, you can try to convince yourself with your thought that, okay, I am not the slipper, I am not the body, and it's okay, it doesn't matter. And mm. I go to the function and things seem resolved for the moment. Mm. Mm. But deep down, that acceptance is still there. Mm. Mm. That my appearance or, you know, the clothes that I wear or the accessories that I'm using. If I'm using things that are worn out, others may not respect me. Mm -hmm. So, in that case, the acceptance is still there. I have not mm -hmm. resolved that acceptance. So at another moment, mm. if I'm unaware, again, the same problem will come up. Mm. Isn't it? G -G -D -D. So it may be slipper this time, next time it might be clothes, another time it might be umbrella, whatever. Mm -hmm. It might be your car, it might be so many things. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. But somewhere that acceptance is something that I need to observe. Mm. as I bring this into my observation and I see that this is not naturally acceptable to me. Yeah. Respect mm. is not something that is there because of the things that I am choosing or using. Mm. Mm. I need to have the feeling of respect within me if I have the feeling of respect within me, then I will not try to get this feeling of respect from others, from the outside. Isn't it? G, 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 D, D. So I have to make sure that I look at this also, that at that moment mm. when I accepted this, I have assumed this Give, I have given this meaning that my clothes determine respect and I need to do this in order to get respect from the other. But mm -hmm. if I have the feeling of respect within me, I am evaluating myself on the basis of the self, then I will be able to clearly see that 
this is a feeling within me. I can rightly evaluate myself on the basis of the self and clothes, mm. accessories, things, objects don't have much to do with this. Mm -hmm. So the more my acceptance, more often I work on it, slowly my acceptance will come in line with my natural acceptance. And then it will not disturb me anymore. But till mm -hmm. that happens, my acceptance will drive my feeling, the feeling will drive my thought, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Didi. Yeah? Thank you so much, Didi. Yes, Didi. Now, uh, the exploration is helping me a lot, Didi, and I could observe in all my day-to-day -day activities also. Nice. And that makes... Everything yeah. going fine and comfortable. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's it from my side. Excellent. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, namaste, Didi. Namaste to all. Namaste. So as you know, Didi, that some of us are here at IIT Kanpur for UHB3 session. So uh, we are sitting for the day long sessions. So um, I could observe that Yesterday, when I'm sitting that in one posture for very long, but then I'm listening to the speaker, then I may not be paying attention to that. But then, uh, when I when I when I get that little bit uh, means uh, the pain, or I feel like that now sitting in this posture is making me uncomfortable. Then I pay attention and change my posture with the responsibility that if I will be sitting in this posture, maybe. It's not good for me. And uh, uh, similarly, uh, as you say that uh, when I'm list, uh, when I'm not, uh, when I'm paying attention to this, that I'm changing my posture and all, then I may be missing some words. Um, although they are coming there and the speaker is there, but then I am not able to uh, read them. Uh, so from yes. here, uh, even even the air condition uh, is there and then uh, I'm not reading it, but till it gets like the body, it, it gets where then we pay attention and then again for some time, but then I then and sometimes we, uh, some of us then take this uh, necessary that, okay, if it's temperature can be regulated uh, and then again, we start paying attention to the speaker. So and this is how it's it's going on, and yes. this this I'm concluding from this uh, point of view that if there would have been hardwire uh, connection between the body and the self, then I would have been reading these sensations every second. But now when I'm lost in the speaker, uh, when I'm we are listening to our mentors, then I, when I'm not paying attention, and obviously the sensations are always there. But then it is my decision whether to read them or not. Nice. So this is how uh, I, I, and even now, um, because it's a day long sessions. So uh, I sleep, it, tiredness is there by the evening and then we sleep. Even now I was um, lying on the bed, then I, then I realized that, okay, there is a, a pain in the back when it touched with the, uh, with the bed. Otherwise, again, it's it maybe there, but I'm not reading it now when I'm speaking to you also. Thank you, Nidhi. This is my observation. Very and nice. Very, one more thing that very nice meeting you all. Here we, I met you also. So yes. many other uh, co explorer also physically okay. whom we listen in the morning sessions. So yes. thank you, Didi. This is my observation. This is how we need to keep observing. And we'll have more and more clarity about the body and the self and the interaction. Uh, yes, Didi, because this will help us again as we all we can explore that I am not the body. Yes. Uh, body and I are different. So I think this step uh, will help us in that also very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Didi. Thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you. Sensation is created inside the body. And it's read by the self. Depending upon the self, uh, whether you want to read or not read. But mm -hmm. during operation, when anesthesia is given, 
either sensation is not created or sensation is not there or something else. Yeah. So when we are giving anesthesia, this process of the reading of the sensation by the self, that is being hampered. Because this connection, the sensations are being relayed to the brain and the self is trying to access this through the brain. But this process of the exchange of information, if we hamper this process in any way, then the self may not be able to read certain sensations. Therefore, like when you have surgery or anything like that, this anesthesia is given so that I mean, if you're going to cut up the skin and all of that, it is going to be extremely painful if you are reading those sensations, isn't it? But because of the anesthesia, the sensation may be there, but now the self is not able to access that. And so there is no discomfort, there is no pain. Right? Yeah. Brain is not reading, or the brain is not able to access. Or same thing, no? Not able to it is the same thing, isn't it? If I am not able yeah. to read, if I don't have access, I am not able to read the sensation, isn't it? Okay. I mean, when do so you read not. certain sensations? So, if there is some pain, no? in fact, pain. When there is that sensation and you read that sensation of pain, it is a kind of an indicator that is giving you this information that there is some disharmony in the body, isn't it? Yeah. So it has that purpose. I mean, nature has so designed it that this happens and then you pay attention to this because somewhere you know, the self is responsible for the body. You do want to take care of the body. Yeah? So yeah. with the help of this sensation of pain, you are able to choose what to do to correct the disharmony in the body. Yeah. Isn't it? But when you are giving some anesthesia, now the situation is, if you have to read this pain, sensation and the sensation is you know it's severe pain unbearable pain then whatever is trying to be done to the body through surgery that may not happen properly so in order to conduct that surgery to be done on the body the doctors you know decide to give some sort of anesthesia somewhere you know uh, what we are trying to do, it could be local anesthesia, it could be general anesthesia. When there is local anesthesia, what is happening is that the nerves that are going to relay this sensation of pain, it is going to be relayed through the brain. It will go up to the brain. So if it is something small, very often, like you have to get a tooth extracted, the doctor might give some injection in the gums which makes that area numb. Now that sensation of pain is not being relayed to the brain because the nerve itself has been, you know, injected with something so that it is not being conveyed. So that would be local anesthesia. When it is more severe, big surgery, whatever, then the whole, you know, this... Uh, transaction of information which you know the self is trying to get this access this uh, access of this information through the brain that whole part is getting obstructed so the self doesn't have access to that so self doesn't feel the pain and the surgery can be completed and after the surgery is completed that anesthesia is withdrawn and within a couple of hours 
the self is now able to read those sensations and now they feel the pain. Self feels the pain. Make sense? The, the time of uh, dumbness yeah. in, a, uh, in, a, in a nose will depend upon the uh, probably uh, the intensity of dose or what? Yes. Yes. Okay. See, every now when you are giving something where uh, something physical, there is some physical interaction in the body, you have given some chemical to make this, uh, you know, um, um, change this interaction. What the nerves are going to convey this sensation. You have given something so that this sensation is not conveyed. Now, if the dose is very small, some amount of sensation may still be conveyed. The dose is large enough that may not be conveyed. So, of course, it will depend on, you know, it depends on many things. It depends on the person, the weight of the body and so many things, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Didi. Thank, Thank you. you. Namaste. Jididi, namaste, namaste. <laughs> so after so long, your voice on this session morning, actually we met yesterday. So I am doing simultaneously two exercises. One given by Kumar Bhai yesterday, 6.30. Now I have to uh, respond on it uh, at 6.30, 24 hours. Observation of the uh, feelings uh, within you. And secondly, this assignment which you are talking I am not the sensation, I am not in sensation, and se sensation is different than me. So, this is what I observed. I am here uh, by 5, 5 10 p, uh, a.m. Uh, here in front of the gate of uh, outreach. But I saw that that gate is locked. So, uh, I came here with a desire that I will go inside and I will put my mobile there and charging and do. So, um, after seeing this uh, gate locked, the sensation uh, uh, given by the my eyes, so it was not uh, correct. But since I am doing these assignments, so I, I don't want to uh, say, miss, I have to keep my feelings right. So now that uh, my friend has come and he's opening the gate, it means that whatever the assumption or whatever I have seen by the eyes, it was not correct. Though the gate is locked, my uh, feelings should not be this stuff. So, Didi, I am observing this for this day. Didi? Yeah. If, we can, if we can keep this, uh, you know, distinct, separate, the feelings, the assumptions, and the reading of the sensation. Like you mentioned, the mm. sensation given by my eyes was wrong. What does that mm. mean? And mm -hmm. I have to interpret that. What is mm. happening? Sensation mm. is there in the body. Mm. Would you classify it as right or wrong? Or sensation is there, I read it, and I mm -hmm. give some meaning to it. Gee, gee, exactly. <laughs> I give some meaning. Though the gate is locked, um, don't worry. I, I just traveled and uh, I have done my exercise here, just moving uh, to and fro. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> now you open. <laughs> gee, gee. Thank you, Didi. Thanks a lot. Namaste, Saviko. Danyawad. Um, can we have some more observations regarding this assignment, step four, or any of the previous steps that we have talked of, observing the self and the body by the self? If we have any questions, anything we'd like to discuss regarding this, we can do that. Each step is important. Each step has its significance. And the more we try to observe you know, uh, break it up and observe, the better it will be for us because uh, there will be more clarity about what exactly is happening in this process. Hearing something, somebody is talking, we are hearing, and then some other, there is some distraction, say there is a mosquito bite or something. And we get busy scratching that mosquito bite. Speaker is still talking. We miss a few words. 
sensation was still there. Speaker is still talking. The impact is the same way on the ear. Everything else is same. Only my attention is not on it. My attention is somewhere else. I am paying attention to some other sensation at that moment. And so on. So you'll be able to notice these things. Namaste, Didi. Namaste. Uh, uh, uh... And now it's a few uh, told about the anesthesia that uh, some parts we get uh, uh, anesthesia, madam. So, so, but internally, some sort of feelings will be gone. So, in my experience uh, regarding pregnancy, while delivery time, no, madam, uh, some uh, uh, downside of the body is given the anesthesia. So, internal in my hand, some sort of feelings are whether the healthy baby is go. Uh, uh, come up or not, uh, uh, some sort of internal feelings in, is going on. So what type of observation or something I couldn't understand? See, so sensation, regarding, huh. yeah. sensation huh. is hmm. in the body. Hmm. Hmm. Feelings, hmm. where are the feelings? Where are the feelings? Self or body? Hmm. Where? Hmm. Where self. are the feelings? Self. Mm -hmm. Right? Self. Huh. Yeah. Mm. So now if you look at this process, mm. you feel you read some sensation from the body. No? Mm -hmm. Say, mm -hmm. given, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You feel some numbness. You're not able to read mm -hmm. sensation of pain. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is one part of the process. Right? This is mm -hmm. when you are interacting with the body. Mm -hmm. But many thoughts may be going on within you, even when you are huh. not interacting with the body. Isn't it? Huh. Huh. You may have huh. some thoughts about what if the anesthesia doesn't go right? What if something else happens? Hmm. Yeah. For this, huh. you don't need to interact with the body. Hmm. Hmm. So this is going on in you independent of the sensations in the body. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. mm, yes, 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 yes. Yes. So you may have certain acceptances, you may have certain fears, you may have certain doubts. Mm -hmm. With that, a lot of times what will happen is even if we see this, you know, what we mm -hmm. mentioned, that you are busy with yourself all the time. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And from yes, time yes, to time, yes. you interact with the body. Huh, huh, huh. At some time, when you pay attention to a particular part, you read that sensation. Hmm, hmm, but hmm. then you become unaware of the sensation. You may be unaware of your thoughts also, but you may be busy within yourself hmm. trying to, uh, you know, just you might be flowing with the imagination. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, the yes, stream yes. of water, your thoughts are flowing, you are also flowing with that. So you may not mm -hmm. even be aware of what is going on within. You may not be aware of what is going on in the body. You may not be aware of mm -hmm. the outside also. You may be so busy within yourself. Mm -hmm. that also, mm -hmm. Right? So these are okay, two okay. Three different things. Okay, ha, ha. okay Devi. Okay. Thank you, Devi. Okay. Namaste to all. Namaste. Uh, the day before yesterday, uh, when I am traveling with my husband with the two wheeler, he didn't notice that uh, humps in the road. Uh, suddenly, the vehicle is jumped. Uh, it is like an accidental moment. I observed that uh, so many things is happening in my body. Uh, like I cannot able to read that any sensation uh, perfectly. It is a shocking moment, Didi. Mm -hmm. And uh, after one or two minutes, I resolve the whole thing because I have to catch the train and have to travel. So I forget that uh, incident within a like five to ten minutes, Didi. Mm -hmm. So if this situation is happen earlier maybe it carries so much time and uh, i can able to see that it happened it's okay and that that is the way i resolve it didi 
and uh, uh, another thing is the sensation uh, it happened the whole body i can observe only that heartbeat uh, mm -hmm. the rise in the heartbeat that only i noticed it yeah nice. very nice so here you know one is the sensation mm -hmm. the actual event that happened mm -hmm. right there is a bump or something happens so you might there might be some sensation because of that mm -hmm. when we come to step 5 we'll be talking about the sources of these mm. sensations that we are reading right so mm. this this event could be one reason why there are some sensations mm. but with that event you know mm. some other thought process has started within us mm. what mm -hmm. if i had fallen down what if something had happened mm -hmm. what if it happens again so many fears so many thoughts mm. isn't mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. with those thought processes with that mm. what is going on in my imagination now that mm. bump is over that sensation yeah. of that you know that jump that you felt that mm. is over mm. but mm. within my imagination so much is going on related to that mm. isn't it yeah things that have not happened i may mm. be fearing some anxiety about what could have happened or what may happen in the future mm. and i may be busy with that and that mm. is also having some impact on the body what is going on in my imagination it's mm -hmm. also having some impact on the body and mm. this may be the reason for that rapid heartbeat mm. that you are able to notice so this we keep doing this you know from time to time we are busy within ourselves then mm. from time to time we interact with the body then we go back within ourselves then again something strikes us we pay attention to it we interact we think it's important then again we go back to the self and this process keeps going on mm. so the more we pay attention to it the more sharply we'll be able to observe these changes that are happening yeah oh thank you thank you thank you so much yes nice observation yeah good morning namaste didi namaste sir kanchi yeah uh, didi uh, i could see that uh, i am is not in the sensation and also i am not the sensation mm -hmm. but the what i want the more clarity is is there any location for the self and one more is the distance between the self and the body that is i want more clarification about these two things yeah so essentially you know right now i think what we need to pay attention to is that like we said self is there body is there sensations are there in the body this particular step we are trying to observe this difference between the self and the body we referred to it as distance between the self and body but then whenever we speak of it as distance um it is assumed that there is some physical distance and so we are trying to see things from the perspective with which we see the nature the everything around us you know our environment but the self is far more subtle than that so you cannot see as in see with the gross something that is more subtle isn't it so if you are trying to see through the sense organs of the body and we are trying to see what the self is it is not going to happen we will not have much success because the instrument that we are trying to use is far more gross than what we are trying to see which is the self which is more subtle so that is just uh, so that we are clear about that now when it comes to the self like we said we can see that there are activities going on with that we can see the self so that's why we are starting from there later as time goes as our 
you know, capacity to observe will become sharper and sharper. Then we may be able to see more detail about the self. But right now, we'd rather, you know, leave it at this because it will create little more confusion or it will become more of a something that we believe. Somebody will say, you know, it is like a point of light. Somebody will say it is having this kind of movement around the body or whatever it may be. I don't want to get into all that because what we are trying to do here is we are trying to explore and see for ourselves what it is. And now at this point, if we just say something about something far more subtle than we can observe, then it will create one more um, acceptance in us about something. So rather than do that, if we can try to observe what we are trying to observe here, it will help us later. Right? Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Actually, that yesterday I was watching one video that this question came to my mind. That's mm -hmm. uh, there it has been referred is it is in between pituitary gland and uh, uh, thalamus, something it has been referred. That's what is there any location and distance? That was the questions which arise to me yesterday, Didi. Yeah, you will also hear many things about relationship with the heart, isn't it? Yeah. But if you see, self is a distinct reality separate from the body, isn't it? Yes, yes. So it is a distinct reality which is, it is associating with the body, but it is not a part of the body. Isn't it? So, do you think it will have a fixed location in one place within the body? Yeah, with this conclusion, it will not be. So, I would say leave it open rather than conclude something. Yeah. There can be a lot of impact of the self on the various parts of the body. Right? Yes. But I would say leave it open. Let us keep exploring. Let's not decide something right now about it. Yeah. Okay, Devi, nice. Thank you, Didi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Didi, good morning. Good morning. Didi, I observe myself. First, I want to uh, say something about self, if you permit me. Yes. Can I say yes. something? Yes. Uh, Didi, there is a book written by Julia Inders. The name of the book is Gut. In that, she referred a psychologist, Bud Craig, C R A I G Craig, who told, told that human self awareness originates in the insular cortex of the brain. It originates in the insular cortex of the brain. Yeah, I would, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. What I would suggest is that rather than go by what somebody is saying about something, we don't know what they have observed, whether they have observed or not, whether they have also read something from somewhere and then concluded this. So there will be many contradictory statements written in many books that I can, you know, talk to you about. Right, Point right. Being, if I really want to know what actually is happening, where it's happening, what does what is the process like, then the real only way to be able to see it properly for myself will be to directly try to observe this. Hmm. But when I read a certain you know book which says it is in so and so place or whatever, how does it matter to me? If somebody says it is in this place of the body or that place of the body, how does it no, make no, a difference? No. Not, not no. making any difference. Not, not making, making any, any difference. difference. No, okay, not so why get into all that? Let me work on... Perfectly right. Perfectly right. You know? that, that I want to tell Didi. That I yeah. want to tell. That I wanted yeah. to tell Didi. Yes. Uh, basically, I wanted to ask you that uh, uh, when I am alert... 
uh, uh, the self and the body relation continues. And when some reflection of the time, when I don't know what happens, the connection, the information transfer between self and body uh, sometimes get lost. Uh, I, uh, for uh, two, three days, I observed myself. I feel that they, I am not the sensation. I am not in the sensation. The It is separate from the self. But when it is alert, everything I sense or I feel, but sometimes I don't feel anything. Uh, sometimes I lost myself. You lost I yourself or you lost yourself or you were not paying attention to the body? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Didi, maybe Didi, maybe Didi. Keep that open, try to observe. See, sensation may be there, like we were just talking about it. We yes. are hearing something. I am saying something. There may be other sound. There may be a peacock calling in the background. There may be a bird. There may be a dog barking. There may be a car passing. So many sounds. There may be the sound of the fan. So many things may be there. All these sounds are reaching your ears. Isn't it? Yes, but yes, yes. you are paying attention to my voice. Why? Because you think this is important right now. These other things right. are not important. Those yes. sensations are also there. But we don't pay attention to them because we don't think that is important for us right now. Isn't it? Now, yes, yes. while paying attention to my voice, some thought comes up about the meeting today or some job-related thing. Today, I have to do such and such activity. Now, you get busy with that thought. Yes. Possible? Right? Possible, possible. When you are possible. busy with that thought, will, do you think you will be able to pay attention to what I am saying? No, no, no. 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 So by the time you realize that you are busy with yourself, I have already spoken many sentences. Now you will start listening again. So yes. this may happen. This, will, this happens with all of us. That's why we need to pay attention. We need to be alert. So that we can, you know. Didi, Didi I want to ask uh, uh, that how can I make it con in uh, uh, alertness in continuity or consistency is it possible to have it consistently or continuously? yes the potential is there in all of us the more we start paying attention the more we will find we are able to pay attention right so we may not have been able to see the thoughts earlier because we yes, were not yes, paying yes, attention yes, to yes. them now we yes. are paying attention you can observe it yes isn't it but yes. from time to time we forget its importance for us. We think something outside is more important. We pay attention to that. But ultimately, we have the potential to be able to observe what is happening within the imagination, to also observe the body, you know, and to also yes. observe the outside. As we go further in the steps, we will be trying to do all that. Yeah. Thank you, Didi. Very practical. Thanks for the crystal clear answer. Thank you very much. So nice of you, Didi. Pranam. Yes, we are almost out of time. Two, three minutes. Chandrasekhar ji, if it is something quick, maybe we can discuss it. Namaste, Didi. Namaste to all. Namaste. Didi, a single question, Didi. Can some multiple selves can be there in a single body? <laughs> we will not get into those <laughs> kind of things. Because there is no way right now for us to try to observe that. No? So we'll not get into that. That yeah. is something. First, we'll go through all these steps and try to observe these. Then later, okay. at some point, we can try to look at that also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we are almost coming to a close. We have a couple more minutes. I think uh, one is that... Uh, Although we have um, sort of done this step four um, 
for a couple of days now. We need to go on to step five. I will just briefly mention a little bit about step five. And we'll try to observe. Um, uh, we talk of the assignment also. So we are talking of reading the sensations in the body, right? And we discussed some of it in the, some of the examples. So sensations may be there from outside. Sensations, because of something happening outside, like we were talking, I'm saying something. I'm speaking this and the voice is reaching your ear. There is some sensation because of that. It could be, it is, you know, the environment. It is very hot outside. You have the sensation of heat on your forehead or the face or whatever. You can read that sensation. These are things from outside. Then there could be something happening within the body. Stomach is grumbling, something is happening. You can read that sensation. This is because of body processes. There can also be, like we discussed, something going on in the imagination. I have some fear. I have some anxiety. This has impact on the body. That is leading to some sensation. So maybe increase in heart rate or sweating on the palms because of some anxiety or fear within and so on. So today what we'll try to do is to observe whatever sensations we are able to observe and try to see where it's coming from. Is it coming from something outside? Is it from within the body? Is it my imagination that is leading to it? What is this source of the sensation? We'll try to see this today all day and tomorrow we'll discuss it in more detail.